I'd like to take a look at uh, how we can use tone curves in order to create a high key image. OK, I've got this image which I've uh, partly processed already. I've uh, adjusted the uh, colour temperature down to uh, 4100 degrees Kelvin and I've got a tint at zero here and an exposure value of plus one. I've also just uh, re-established a black point by setting the black slider to minus 18 here. OK, in order to create a high key effect, generally what we're trying to do is uh, raise the mid-tone values so they all become highlights. And we try to do this without clipping uh, the brightest tones within the image. OK, so the, perhaps the obvious slider to try and achieve this uh, effect would be to grab the highlight slider and start pushing this uh, higher still. OK, we're going to push it all the way over and as you can see we can push it all of the way to uh, plus 100 without clipping any of the brightest tones in the image here. If I put my uh, mouse cursor over these brightest tones you'll see that they're just in the uh, high uh, 240s, just touching 250 there. So we've uh, managed to uh, retain uh, most of the detail if we were to uh, try and print this image. OK. Uh, but for a classic high key look, we're actually going to want to raise these even further. One of the um, things that I'm going to do after raising the highlight slider is I'm finding the, uh, the contrast is building perhaps just a little bit too high for my liking. This is a subjective adjustment, but I'm going to raise that uh, contrast slider uh, down to uh, probably something uh, quite significant like minus 50 or so, uh, just to lower that contrast. And again, uh, if you prefer the higher contrast version, uh, then you're welcome to leave that contrast uh, um, slider at the uh, zero setting. OK, in order to uh, raise or push uh, more of the midtones to highlight values, I'm going to move over to the Tone Curve tab. Now we have two choices. We have the uh, parametric and also the point curve. And I'm going to show how we could uh, try and achieve um, the look that I'm trying to create uh, using either of these um, um, uh, panels here. Now the first thing I'd want to do is again uh, push the, uh, the light slider higher. OK, in order to try and achieve this effect. Now if we push it too high, we're actually going to uh, clip some of these tones. You can see the clipping warning appearing here. And so we need to try and be a little bit more careful how we push the tones higher uh, to uh, protect the clipping. And one of the ways I'm going to do this is just I'll just back off there a little bit and uh, move that highlight slider. You can see that we can actually pull um, the upper portion of the curve uh, but it's actually focusing its attention also very close to the main portion of the uh, skin tones here. So I'll just uh, zero that and show you how we can uh, fine tune uh, to preserve the absolute brightest tones within the image. I can actually move that uh, adjustment point over to the extreme right hand side and go as far as 90 on the histogram here and then I can start pulling the highlights back in and you can see that uh, we're actually just lowering that upper portion now over that brightest tones as we pull that down and this allows me to pull the lights uh, even higher. I can actually uh, focus the uh, light slider also over onto the right hand side so it's sitting uh, directly underneath the darker skin tones on the histogram as I push that and I can push that really quite high now um, um, knowing that my brightest uh, values are not going to clip too readily. We've got a small amount of saturation clipping there um, but we could actually uh, protect that uh, if we go back into the, uh, the, the main panel here. I'm just going to go into, back into the basic panel and pull that uh, vibrant slider down a, a small amount here uh, until we've got uh, none of that um, saturation clipping occurring. Uh, at all. And here we've created that classic high key look where um, most of the skin tones now are occupying really quite bright uh, tones uh, but still whilst hanging on to the, the darker shadow tones. If you do want to uh, pull those shadow tones down we can actually uh, pull them down using the shadow slider in order to create some uh, richer uh, hair tones there. OK, we could also uh, create this uh, look um, by using the alternative um, uh, point curve here. I'll just uh, zero these sliders to show you how we'd use that alternate panel. I'll just double click on both of the lights and highlight sliders uh, re to return to that uh, view. Now we're working with that lower saturation, um, but uh, I'll just uh, move over to that point tab now. 
Now we can actually I, try and identify um, the darker skin tones by coming into the uh, preview and maybe we'll just uh, zoom in a couple of times so we get a clearer idea of uh, where we're working here. I'm just going to hold down the um, uh, the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and just uh, click on those uh, darker skin tones there and this will set an adjustment point uh, in, in on the tone curve and then the brightest skin tones we want to actually protect are just right here on the cheek here so I'm just going to command or control click on those brightest tones and as you can see they're sitting much higher on the histogram there and now I'll take um, the darker skin tones and raise them until they're quite a lot brighter in order to create that high key effect now sometimes uh, what I like to do when I'm creating this high key effect on this point curve is just pull that uh, brightest point uh, down a little bit just so we get a smoother curve uh, transition coming over there and this allows me to pull it even higher okay, without creating any unnatural tones. Now we don't actually have a white point on the histogram anymore because we've pulled that white point down but I actually um, find that this actually creates uh, quite a, a pleasant high key effect just with that slightly mute uh, white point here but very bright tones running through the image okay so um, I'm going to actually uh, do a, a few more modifications now typically when we're doing some uh, glamour retouching we might uh, be um, uh, I uh, want to do this in the main editing space but it's remarkable how much of uh, this editing we can now do inside of Adobe Camera Raw okay let's just return to the basic panel we can actually create um, some small amount of softening here just by uh, taking the clarity slider and just pulling that uh, to a small way to the uh, to the left hand side it's quite an aggressive um, slider of clarity especially in the negative value so you just want to be uh, careful not to pull this too far otherwise we're going to uh, start creating this uh, sort of foggy appearance and we get some uh, stretch um, slightly strange uh, tonality running through the darker tones uh, as the um, as the light tones uh, flood and pollute these areas so I'm just going to back that off to uh, perhaps a, a more um, a usable value uh, perhaps minus 15 or so uh, to create that soft um, glow over this image okay and uh, um, the vibrant slider is probably appropriately set uh, at this uh, value and um, now I'm going to go in and take a look at um, um, some sharpening that we can do okay so I'll just come over to the uh, the detail tab and uh, we've got uh, some sharpening applied here I'm just going to raise that perhaps a little bit more and we're going to zoom in to actual pixels um, a command option 0 on a Mac or control alt 0 on a PC so we can take a look at uh, sharpening of some of these uh, uh, darker tones within the image okay now we can actually erase this uh, quite significantly um, there's a little bit of uh, detail coming and uh, we're actually trying to remove perhaps a small amount of the noise using the noise reduction slider there just to keep uh, the, the skin absolutely um, as smooth as we possibly can also when we're sharpening an image just to make sure we don't uh, sharpen any of the artifacts running over the smooth skin it's probably a good idea just to hold down the alt or option key and then raise that masking slider just so we protect um, the skin from any sharpening that we carry out here if I just raise this to perhaps to around about 40 we're going to protect those smoother areas of skin from the sharpening that we're applying here and again I'll just um, fit on screen command uh, 0 or control 0 on a PC uh, to zoom back out okay now we're going to do um, some uh, uh, localized retouching again I'll perhaps I'll zoom in to uh, 50 percent uh, uh, in order to carry out this uh, localized retouching and I'll just uh, reposition this on the screen just holding down the space bar as I drag there uh, I'm noticing that the high, high key effect on the skin is really quite pleasing but we're starting to create uh, the lips and the eyebrows and the eyes are just perhaps getting a, a little bit uh, too light and these would probably be best served if they were just a little bit uh, deeper in tone so I'm just going to click on the, uh, the adjustment brush tool uh, K on the keyboard uh, to enter there and uh, we can uh, click on either any of the minus or plus and this will zero all of the sliders here I'm actually going to click on the minus exposure to uh, set a, a minus half stop exposure value here now we're going to set uh, the feather at uh, 100 
and uh, also I'm going to work um, uh, at uh, 100 on the flow as well just uh, and also the density can go to 100 now just increase the size of the brush I'm going to use the square bracket keys just to increase the size of the brush a small amount there and uh, we're going to uh, drop that lower exposure value uh, over the uh, the eyes there just to make those just a little bit richer and also on this eye here just to return some of that beautiful tone around the eyes there and also um, over onto the eyebrows just to decrease the size of the brush to make sure we don't spill out onto the skin tones there okay now I've just uh, come outside and onto the skin there so I'm just going to hold down the alter option key and uh, wipe that away from that uh, skin just around that eye there okay and I'm also going to uh, uh, um, increase the size of the brush one more time and uh, we're going to paint over the lips you can try using the auto mask feature here just to contain behind some of the edges so this will um, prevent me from just spilling out and um, uh, darkening some of the skin unnecessarily okay and just a nice tone we can perhaps um, just uh, decrease that uh, a fraction more just to make a slightly darker skin tone we could also reduce the um, uh, the flow here and um, just hold down the alt option key and just take out some of that lightning effect on this side of the lips there just to even up so we get a nice even uh, luminance value from the uh, left side to the right side there okay so we're um, um, one of the other things I can do with exposure in this area is we perhaps uh, could have done with an additional hair light here we're just getting a slightly dark um, uh, hair on the top uh, where the light isn't uh, falling in, in uh, as much intensity as it is towards the center of the face here so perhaps I'm going to move uh, from a negative exposure value and click on the new radio button and uh, click on the uh, plus exposure value and uh, again perhaps using a, a slightly larger brush this time just move in over there and just uh, add a little bit more light to that dark portion of the hair here and uh, we can just cycle around looking to see if we've got any more dark areas that we need to brighten but I know I think that will suffice there we're just uh, taking out that very dark mass on the top of the hair there now um, if we're opening up shadows uh, quite aggressively as we are there we may just want to add in a small amount of noise reduction just so we don't get um, any unpleasant uh, artifacts of the noise creeping in as we brighten those very dark areas okay now uh, I'm going to uh, create uh, another new brush this time and uh, this time I'm going to um, make a, a cooler uh, temperature I'm going to actually uh, make some uh, stronger blue uh, around the eyes there and again I'll just decrease the size of the brush and then paint over these blue eyes in order to create um, uh, some more striking uh, blue into those eyes and just decrease the size of the brush a little bit more and just paint over this other iris here now as I um, uh, decrease uh, the temperature I've also got the exposure decrease uh, increasing so I'm just going to wind that back a little bit just so we create um, some slightly richer tones there I could also um, mix in some saturation at this point just to uh, if I wanted to increase the effect even further um, and uh, perhaps um, finally um, to come in I could also if we do want to uh, have to uh, um, soften the skin even any further then we can smooth that out uh, again another new brush and uh, in order to uh, smooth any um, rough patches of skin down I can move into a negative clarity now um, we can use a much uh, stronger uh, negative clarity setting um, if we're going to use um, a localized brush and uh, I'll probably want to make sure that I don't spill out, out, out over any of the sharper details by making sure I've got the auto mask selected I'm going to raise that feather uh, back up oh, sorry the flow back up to 100 there and uh, I can also um, uh, take out uh, sharpness at this stage as well so as well as negative clarity I can put in a negative sharpness value and now I can move over any skin um, perhaps just around the neck here uh, I can just uh, brush in over those areas just to make sure that it's absolutely as smooth as possible and uh, perhaps over that jawline there just to soften up that uh, edge and uh, coming out uh, over the uh, side of the face now just brushing down 
making sure that's as soft as possible in those areas. Okay, and uh, that's uh, my high key makeover. I'll just uh, zoom out a couple of times uh, so we can see the resulting image. And uh, we can actually uh, hide those pins from view uh, before we return to the, uh, the, the basic panel. Uh, just so we can see that uh, we've come an extremely long way without even going into the main editing space to do this uh, glamour makeover. And I'll just uh, hit the uh, show pins again and uh, return to the uh, the basic panel just by hitting the zoom or hand tool there. Uh, once in the basic panel we could make um, some final adjustments to this image. Um, I would like uh, to uh, perhaps uh, now take a look at how we could perhaps uh, color grade this image. Um, let's return to the uh, tone curve panel and uh, we're in the point panel still, still with that uh, high key adjustment that we made earlier. Um, but uh, you may have noticed that inside the channels now, inside the tone curve, not only can we edit the RGB curve, we can also in edit individual red, green and blue channels. And this is new to ACR7. Let's just take a look at what we could do in order to create a color grading treatment inside of ACR. I could uh, create um, or raise this um, uh, this input value here to create a, a blue cast inside of the darker areas or tones inside of the image and I can also pull down the white point inside the blue curve in order to create a, a yellow cast inside of the highlights and this gives us that uh, faded uh, 1970s film look uh, that has been, become quite popular uh, in Hollywood and also in Stills image making. Okay, so we could also come over to uh, the red channel to fine-tune this effect. For instance, I could just uh, raise um, that um, or clip uh, those uh, reds just to the point where we actually created some um, uh, a lower white point inside the RGB curve and then I can pull down uh, perhaps in those shadows uh, just to return some of the cooler tones in there. Now we're creating sort of a, a cross-process look inside of uh, this uh, tone curve here. And uh, uh, if we want to come back and create, added some uh, the contrast back into this image, because we're actually lowering the contrast now, we could come in and pull those shadow tones down, perhaps a little bit more, and also raise the uh, highlights to create a sort of a higher contrast cross-process look, uh, like so. And if we wanted to uh, save that uh, uh, quite adventurous looking curve, both the high key effect and also the color grading into this image, then we could just uh, come and uh, choose uh, save settings uh, from the fly out menu there. And uh, what we'd do is uh, come down to the subset and uh, just choose the, um, uh, the point curve here and then save those settings. And I could call this my uh, cross process. Uh, cur curve and hit that save and now that becomes um, a preset that I can apply uh, from the presets panel over here and we'll see that uh, cross process look uh, in, uh, in my uh, menu here Okay, so uh, that uh, completes the tutorial on Tone Curve. Uh, we can also take a look uh, in the next uh, movie tutorial about how we can create this uh, high key effect using curves in the main editing space of Photoshop.